Sadly, bike theft from the home is all too common these days. So here are some tips and techniques to make sure your bike is as secure as it can be when it's locked up in your garage or shed. It's not enough just to have your bike in a locked garage or shed. A lot of insurers now will stipulate that the bike has to be secured to an immovable object with approved locking devices in order for the insurance to be valid. So bear that in mind. We're gonna look more closely at some products and techniques for that shortly. But before we do so, it's important to realize that the security of your bike really begins before you even get it home. Uh, and being aware of how thieves might spot your bike and potentially um, target it to, to steal at a later date. For instance, following people home is quite common. Um, bikes on roof racks on cars uh, or outside the cafe, for instance, a thief might clock that bike, think, you know, that, that would be a really good bike to steal and, and actually follow people home to then be able to scope out the location to see if they could break in at a later date. There's also the point of when you get home, therefore not leaving your bike on view for any length of time. So if you arrive home, um, not leaning it against the front garden gate and uh, spending ages nipping in and making coffee or whatever, and leaving your bike on show, or even on the, again, the roof rack of the car is a common one. Um, and when you do open your garage door, try to keep that you know, as, as closed as, as often as you can really. If you've got passing traffic, that's particularly important because people can be looking in your garage, seeing what you've got in there, eyeing up the bikes, also looking at you know, where they're, they're locked and, and what the potential uh, ways to steal them could be. So bear all that in mind, it's really important. Um, and also with uploading your ride data, this has become more and more common now. People love to upload their ride data to software like Strava. Um, there are techniques built into that software for security so that you can have a kind of a, a, a dead zone around your house for a kilometre, which is really important that you mark those settings just so that a thief can't be looking at your, your ride data and seeing where your house is located at the start and finish of all of your rides, because you're basically giving someone a pinpoint on a map for where your bikes live. It's important to consider some of the aspects of the actual building that you're locking your bike in, be that a shed or a garage. Um, you know, things like windows. Uh, it's likely that a shed or a garage will have a window, but obscuring the glass, for instance, is a really simple technique to stop someone being able to peer in and have a little look and scope out what's in there. Putting extra bars across the window uh, is another good, good tip. That will stop someone from using the window as a means to get stuff out. Um, the garage door, for instance, if it's an up and over door, a good idea is to reverse your car or vehicle up against the door. So then that can't be uh, used as a, a means of entry or exit as easily. It's just putting another um, thing in, in the way, basically, for a thief to be able to get your bike out. A good alarm system kind of goes without saying. Yeah, all those things are going to basically add up to um, more and more risk for the thief. And that's what you're trying to do. Sadly, it's probably the case that if a thief really wants your bike, Bike in this current day and age, they will probably find a way to be able to get it. Ultimately, if a thief is looking at your property and they're seeing alarm systems, bars on windows, high quality door locks, security lighting, and all those kind of techniques that you've used, then there's a good chance they're gonna see it as too risky and move on and, and look elsewhere. So what we have here is a fairly common setup that you might expect to see in a home garage. We've got a bicycle racking system um, with a solid wall anchor mounted to the brick wall behind. And what that's gonna enable me to do is hang my bike nice and neatly and then have this secure point where I can lock it to. Um, to the, an immovable object, which is really important because a number of insurance companies now will stipulate that as a minimum requirement. You need to have your bike locked to something immovable, such as a wall anchor, um, with an approved lock as well. At this point, you've got to assume that if a thief has broken into your garage uh, and trying to steal your bike from here, they've come pretty well prepared. Um, this is not an opportunist thief that we're dealing with. Yeah, they've probably scoped out the location and come with power tools and other, other techniques um, that they're prepared to use to get your bike away from here. So what we're, tr we're trying to do with the, the locking setup that you use is basically deter them for as long as possible. And that's where the level of lock that you buy and use is really important to consider. Um, the best locks, it goes without saying, are the most expensive locks. But what you've got to, I guess, weigh up is um, how much value do you put on, on your bike? If you've got a, a bike worth several thousand pounds, spending a couple of hundred pounds on locks in the grand scheme of things really shouldn't be uh, too much of an issue. So yeah, looking to buy those top end locks is gonna deter a thief for the longest possible amount of time. And that's, that's really what they don't like. Thieves wanna be in and out as quickly as possible. So um, in the UK, we have a simple 
bronze, silver and gold tiered system done by a company called Sold Secure. So that's an independent test company which tests all sorts of locks from yeah, bike locks all the way up to like the lock that you use on your front door of your house, for instance. And uh, by using that rating system, you can see really easily on the packaging of most locks um, what level of security you're going to get by buying that particular product, um, whether that is a wall anchor. So this is a, a top end level wall anchor you can see fitted to this wall here. There's a slightly smaller version um, here, um, although still a gold level of secure um, sold secure. Um, different chains, different thicknesses, weights. The good thing I guess about locking a bike in the house or in a garage is you don't need, need to worry about the, the weight or size of the lock. It's not something you need to carry around with you. So I guess that's the best advice we could really offer for home security and that is just spend as much as you physically can on locks um, to make sure that you're giving your bike the best chance of not getting nicked. So let's take a look at some of the ways that you could actually lock your bike to the wall anchor when it's in situ. Um, I should point out that the, the bike stand or the, the racking system isn't an essential part of this. Um, I just prefer to have my bike hanging neatly so that the levers are not getting scuffed against the wall and so on. But you could equally make your bike secure if it was leaning on the floor and, and just up against the wall. Um, the key thing obviously is the anchor point on the wall and the type of lock that you use to secure your bike. So, D-locks are very common. This is a top end high level of security D-lock. And what I could achieve with that then is simply to go through the wall anchor and directly round one of the main frame tubes to secure my bike like so. And that would be a very high level of security in this garage setting. And I guess it's important to point out at this stage that unlike for instance, when you're locking your bike, outside the shop or cafe or whatever, and you're worried about your saddle or wheels being stolen, a thief that's in your garage is really more interested in getting the whole bike. So you don't always have to worry about all the little ancillary parts. You're just getting the frame as secure as you can against the wall. Um, however, that said, if you did want a different option that would secure all the parts of the bike, and I quite like this option personally, and that is to use a heavy duty chain lock such as this one. Same level of sort of gold security um, is on, on offer with this, but just a little bit more versatility in terms of what you're able to actually cover with the lock. So feeding that through, this lock is 1.4 meters long, which is a really good length, giving you just enough cable to go through both wheels and the frame. Okay, so that would be an example of a really good secure way to lock your bike in a home garage situation. You can't really do much more than that in terms of the, the level of, of locking uh, and products that you've used and so on. What you might want to consider at this point is one last step, which is to take a photo of your bike in situ. Um, that is part of what you call, we call the three R's, which is to record, register and report. So recording, obviously, getting that photo will be proof, not only to the police when you re report the crime, but also to your insurance company uh, of the lengths that you went to to make sure your bike was as secure as it could be um, using approved locks and so on. Um, the register point of those three R's is to get your bike registered with one of the national databases which are approved by the police forces across the country, uh, one of which is bikeregister.com, and that will just mean that your bike is uh, on that database, so should it be recovered at any point after a theft, it will find its way back to you. And of course, the, uh, the report part of that is obvious. Do make sure that you're reporting the crime to your local police force. Um, so they're aware of the crimes in your area as well. You will certainly need that crime reference number in any case if you want to begin an insurance claim if you are unlucky enough to have had your bike stolen. But hopefully with all the advice we've given you in this video, we've shown you how to take uh, the best possible steps to maximize the security of your bike in the, in the home or garage. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, do head over to the YouTube channel uh, for Cyclist Magazine and also check out cyclist.co.uk.